Hello, Bar McCarthy here from Bold and Break. I am delighted to bring you a very interesting tutorial on radial anastrosophy. This aligns with the recent release of my Brush Metals Shader Pack for Redshift. If you haven't seen it yet, take a look. <laughs> Go to the Bold and Break website and have a look. It is only 15 quid and it's a nice little addition to your texture library. There is also a Bold and Break membership that starts at just one pound. And if you sign up, you will get one working file from the Bold and Break store for free of your choice. This does not include the Rich of Materials pack, just to be clear. There are also discounts that you get as you go up the tiers which you can apply. And the top tier, you get everything on the Bold and Break store for free, including mentorship and one-to-ones with myself. So without further ado, let's get started on creating some radial and satrapy. So let's create a material, retro material that is important because we need control over this material. Um, we are going to set our BRDF to GDX. This is the reflection algorithm better for metal materials. We'll bring down our weight of our diffuse to zero. So we're going to apply it to our object in the scene. Bring our roughness up to 0.15. Um, and just bring the anisotropy up to maybe 0.2 here. We don't have the map created for anisotropy, so we won't see any change there. Change the Fresnel type to metalness. And maybe bring the reflectivity just down so we have a more silver color. In the uh, materials pack, you will see I did color plus edge tint. This is just to give people more control. If you want to keep it simple, just go for metalness and you know you can apply whatever color metal you want. But if you use this color plus tint, you can add a ramp into your reflectivity and you could just add a bit more variation to the color that's in your metal, which just gives you a little bit more control and realism or stylization, whatever you're going for. For simplicity, keep it to metalist. Let's press C and add a color layer node. And then let's press C again and add tiles. This is a relatively new node to Redshift, but it is very helpful in creating some patterns and procedural maps. So we're going to set the pattern to spiral two. We'll do the grout width to zero and the bevel width to 0.5. Do a darker gray grout color. I'm going to maybe a lighter tile one, a slightly darker tile two, and a dark tile three. Maybe bring the grout color just to be a little bit darker here. And solo your color layer so you can see what's going on back into your tile. Bring your global scale 2.1. Bring your U scale 2.5, V scale 2.6, the radial scale to zero. Cool. So this is the base level. You can see what we're trying to achieve. You know, this reflection map that you know, gives you the radial anastrosophy. We're going to copy this tile. We're going to bring our global scale up to 0.5. Now, let's solo this tile so we can see what's happening. Actually bring it down to 0.1. So you can see I'm scaling out the, the thickness of those lines. We also want to maybe change the colors around a little bit because we're going to use this on the layers to break things up to make it feel less uniform and more natural. That may be darker. And put that into our layer two. Solo your color layer again. Activate layer two. Put it into add mode and you can see that just kind of gives you a better look basically a more a look with less uniformity and we want to copy this again solo this tile and we want to make this pretty big so 1.2 1 1 bring the bevel width to zero you know just to give these lines harsher we're going to use this as a mask maybe 0.1 a little bit and we just want to swap around these colors this just takes a little bit of experimenting with this maybe dark gray here. Light. Actually make that really dark. And then we plug it into our layer two mask. Solo this. You could see there this 
tile. It's it's cutting across it. It's adding some mask. We don't have to use this tile. Um, I like kind of how it breaks things up a little bit. Maybe zero again. You'll see if we you can see this kind of break up a little bit sparsity like it cuts in here. Let's try Let's try and do that. Let's use that value here. Maybe 0.6 on the bevel width for the third tile. If we plug our color layer into rotation, if you type it in, take off the solo. If we take a look at our layer, the anisotropy is active. Now, this looks far too harsh for me. So we're just going to rotate it here. Far, far too harsh, especially from an angle. How do we fix this? We need to add another layer. Press C again, add a ramp, and plug this into layer three of the color. So we want to bring our knot here in our ramp. Let's activate layer three, change this to a light gray, change this to a very dark gray. Select the knot that starts and hold control, drag that to the end. The next knot, which is a darker gray, hold control and drag that near your end node here. And then again, we want to bring a fifth knot and we just want to build this pattern. Change the mapping type to radial, bring your mask value to maybe 0.8. And the harshness of the anisotropy is much less because you have this ramp with radial mapping kind of like it's almost like a layer in Photoshop and you're bringing down the op opacity of it. So that is a great way to kind of lessen the harshness. If we bring it up to 0.9. Again, you're just blocking out that harshness. As we rotate, you'll see the anisotropy reveal itself. Um, I would definitely play around with these values and see what look you get. This is the exact look that I packaged up in the shader file. This is tutorials more to show how you build it. If we go into our RS material, our redshift material here, this node, we bring up the metalness. You know, it's going to add the value, the metal value. And you're probably saying to yourself, oh, that anisotropy, it's not perfectly centered. And you would be correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all our nodes here press Alt G, call this anisotropy, and we kind of have our own map. Double click to go into it, and you can click the tab here to go back to your main view. Press C, we put in a UV projection node, and we plug it in here, um, and we put it into rotation, and it's gone. Don't worry, we'll get it back. We will then change our coordinate space to object, and you can see we're kind of getting it back here. Set our scale to one across all three transform properties and just bring our offset on the V to 0.1. We have it centered. We can go 0.05 and you can move that around and you can control where that anisotropy is located, which gives you ultimate control over the reflection and kind of how it works, which is brilliant. And you can see here as we rotate the camera and the lights in our scene, it is working very nicely. So I'm not going to go into um, how to build out a full metal material with this, but I do think it's worth just going over a few quick settings before we finish up. We have our Fresnel type here, which is metal. Um, if we change our reflectivity color, nothing happens. That is because we have the metalness set to one. If we bring our metalness down to zero, you will get the full color. This isn't the best way to do a metal material sometimes, which is why in the material pack, you will see I set it to color plus tint because you can add just a little bit more control. If I was to get a ramp, and let's, let's say, goldish material here, but we don't want it to be just gold wipe across the whole object. So we have a lighter tint here and you can add as many knots as you need. So we'll bring this in and import this to reflectivity. And you'll see here, you can add your color with this also. And you can just add a metal tint to this. It gives you a little bit more control over and what color you want. If you want to keep it simple, just put it to metalness and just play around with this metalness value. 
the more metal you add, the more color you lose. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from it. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. Check out the Bold and Break store. Check out the membership. It's only one pound and you get a discount, you get a working file, you get priority in the comments. Check out what you get in the other tiers if it's interest of you. Bold and Break would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.